Hey guys, it's me, Remod Calculator. Today I'm going to discuss the precise definition of a limit, or commonly known as epsilon delta form. So, what is the formal definition of a limit? We know the informal definition, which is commonly known as the limit as x approaches some number a of a function f of x is equal to some other number l. That's not good enough to mathematicians. Um, just a quick note here, if you're not really getting into analysis or anything of higher mathematics, it really isn't that important to know this, but if you are getting into higher mathematics, it's really helpful that you go over this. So, if you are one of those higher mathematics people, this simple definition, unfortunately, does not cut it. So, why is that? because we don't know how sufficiently close x has to be to a in order for us to get sufficiently close to l. I would show you graphically, unfortunately, I don't know how. Um, probably take a long time to draw the graph. But uh, if you want, you know, uh, Midnight Tutor has a great video on this too, so you can view that as well as a supplement. But for now, just watch mine, because I'm better. Just joking. <laughs> Anyways. So, we can substitute for the expression, how sufficiently close to a with this expression? f of x minus l less than some number epsilon. And another one, how sufficiently close to l with 0 less than x minus a less than delta. Okay? So... Simple enough, or not simple enough. You, one problem you might encounter here is, where do I go from here? So, we'll jump into an example uh, from a book. Um, if you have the book, check it out for reference. It is about Calculus of the Single Variable by Berkey Blanchard, 3rd edition. It is in section 2.3 which is where I'm getting this example from. So, let's say you have the problem, prove that the limit as x approaches 3 of the function 2x plus 1 is equal to 7. Where do we start now? This is the main question that gets everybody. Where do we start? Precise place to start is the epsilon inequality. What was the epsilon inequality? I'll recap on that. It was f of x, which is 2x plus 1, minus the limit l, which in this case is 7, less than epsilon. This reduces to 2x minus 6, less than epsilon, which you could factor out a 2 here. Why you can do that, I will explain in a little bit. Factor out a 2, you get x minus 3, less than epsilon. Running out of room here, so... You get x minus 3 is less than epsilon over 2. Okay? Now you'll notice that this quantity in the absolute value bars is equal to x minus a, which is 0 less than x minus 3, which is less than delta. Okay, so now we have sufficient information to complete the proof. How do we do this? Well, we start off by saying, choose epsilon greater than zero. Um, also, let delta equal epsilon over two. Now it takes a little bit to realize why this is. It's because of the inequality, because the function exists at that point, because the limit exists, that we could factor out and equal x minus a. So, um, choose epsilon greater than zero, 
let delta equal epsilon over 2. So, um, we have 0 less than x minus 3 less than delta, right? That's where our delta inequality is. So if this is true, uh, let me just adjust, my knees are killing me, then 2x plus 1 minus 7, all right, is equal to 2x minus 6, which equals 2 times x minus 3, which equals, so let's see, 2x minus 3 is less than 2 delta, 2 delta, all right, and since delta is equal to epsilon over 2, let's write that out, times epsilon over 2, 2 and 2 cancel out, and we get epsilon, thus completing the proof. All right, thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Raymond Calculator, and I'm getting out of here.